real briefly, we're going to talk about MCDEX. In MCDEX, uh, their version 3, they built a decentralized exchange that allows us to trade perpetuals. This is going to be really important as decentralized finance tries to overtake and tries to take up a lot of the efficiencies of traditional finance. So real quickly, uh, it, it is a decentralized exchange. And the beauty here is they have they have looked to outsource, they've looked to find ways to decentralize all these disparate pieces that in the past were, were either centralized or just non-existent, and it makes this really efficient. So first, what, what we're trading here is perpetuals. And a perpetual or perpetual swap is essentially just a derivative that, that is based on the price of some underlying asset or some underlying index. So a perpetual could be Bitcoin. We've seen it you know, with Bitcoin, ETH, even XRP in the past on some centralized exchanges. But a perpetual could also be oil, S&P 500, Tesla, something like that. Something where you know that you can derive the price from elsewhere and create this derivative uh, um, token, this derivative asset that can be traded on this decentralized exchange. So an operator, this is one of the functions here, an operator can decide there is a market to trade some sort of asset. And again, that asset could be Bitcoin, ETH, some you know cryptocurrency. That asset could again be Tesla, it could be the price of oil, it could be whatever you want it to be. So the operator sets the rules for trading that particular perpetual. Rules like leverage. That operator decides on the oracle and actually either connects or pays for the oracle. Now MCDEX has some connections that you can use uh, with regard to oracle. So this is what the operator does and the operator sets the rules. The operator can even hand over the keys or hand over operation to someone else at some point, but the operator has to check in about every 10 days, otherwise they get, they get fired from operating this particular market. So now, here's where it gets interesting, because if you're going to trade, so most of the people in this system are going to be traders, and they say, look, I want to trade uh, this particular asset. I need exposure to this particular asset. I either want to go long or short, and sometimes it's for trading purposes just to make more money, but sometimes it's also for hedging purposes, and this is where we see it's really important. The important part is the traders, if they are trading, uh, in, in most centralized exchanges, there's a maker and a taker, a bid and an ask. In this case, the trader is always the taker because the maker is the AMM. So the, the AMM, the algorithm watching this, is always making the market. The trader is always taking whatever price is available from the AMM. Now the AMM, the algorithm, is obviously going to engineer it uh, to, to try to make sure that, that those that are trying to go long, this particular perpetual, those that think it's going to go up, and those that are trying to go short are, are close together. Right, so you don't have, have longs that want to buy Bitcoin at 55,000 and shorts that want to short it at 60. You want to bring that together. And the way they do that, usually with perpetuals, is through a funding mechanism. And the funding says, uh, if, if we need to bring the price down a little bit to match what's going on in other exchanges, then we kind of pay the shorts. We fund the shorts a little bit to give them some incentive to bring their, their prices down. If we need the price to go up a little bit, we fund the longs. Now, in the past, that funding has come from some sort of centralized exchange, or it's come from the makers and the takers specifically, which leads to less efficiency and more liquidation. So some of the brilliance here on MCDEX is they have liquidity providers. And liquidity providers, uh, you know, just another way to get yield, they can look at this market and go, oh, we feel like there's going to be a place where we can provide liquidity to help that funding mechanism, to help those go, go up and down. Because we know these traders have had to put up liquidity in order to trade. They might put ETH up as liquidity to trade, but then using whatever the value of that ETH is, they can go trade whatever this perpetual is, whether it's oil or Bitcoin or, or ETH or Tesla or whatever it might be, they can go trade it and they put ETH up as, as collateral. Now the liquidity providers put in more liquidity and that's going to help provide the funding. And that's going to help this, be, this AMM function even more efficiently. Because the liquidity providers can provide this in ETH or any other digital asset into this pool here. And this pool is only used for this particular perpetual. Again, if this is oil, this pool is used. So they could put ETH, they could put, you know, chain link, whatever it might be. And these are some of the rules the operator is going to set. So whatever is in this pool. So if there's a million dollars in this pool worth of 
cryptocurrency worth of digital assets, this can be used to fund the AMM to, to keep the market in balance so it's not completely out of whack because it gets that way if either only the traders are providing the liquidity, if only the traders are providing the collateral, then the market can get out of whack because there's no funding mechanism to bring the makers and the, to, to bring the bid and the asker, to bring the long and the short together. But we also, the brilliance here is we don't need a centralized exchange. So in the past, perpetuals have usually been traded on centralized exchanges. We don't need a centralized exchange to provide this anymore now we're, we're giving that ability to others to get into this decentralized system. So the brilliance here is you have liquidity providers that can provide this pool for the AMM. The AMM can always be the maker of the market because it's just an algorithm. It's just watching the market and deciding based on this oracle and based on the price of the perpetual, based on the longs and the shorts, whether, whether it needs to set the price a little bit higher or lower, and it can fund those shorts and those longs. It can give them that incentive, but that incentive is coming from these liquidity providers that are, of course, making a little bit of fee on this. The operator is making a fee on every trade. The traders are obviously now able to trade uh, assets that they wouldn't normally be able to or that they don't have to. They don't have that they could trade a perpetual Bitcoin and, and all they have is ETH or all they have is Ethereum based tokens. Okay, where we see this being really important also is when you look in the traditional world, things like uh, as we mentioned, oil, S P, Tesla, something like that. I can potentially hedge if I'm long oil in my life or in my business, I can short it in some sort of perpetual market without having to go open a brokerage account without having to deal with the traditional market. That's where we see where this can be really important, not only in crypto, but in the traditional world. So that's a little bit about MCDEX and, and version 3 that's coming out that is decentralizing every bit uh, of, this particular, uh, of this particular decentralized exchange, giving us the ability to have a decentralized manner in which to trade perpetuals, which are essentially derivatives uh, with no expiration date on top of the, that are built on the price of certain underlying assets.